<laughs> I'm Alexis Schloss, and uh, that's a tricky name to say quickly. <laughs> and I'm Eric Schloss. I'm a Southern girl. I'm from Medicine Hat. <laughs> and, but Eric was born in... And I was born in Camrose. No, well, I, I grew up in Camrose. Well, I came because we got married and we'd like to live together. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so I came to Edmonton. But honestly, it was love at first sight, not only for Eric, but I love Ed. Well, you already know, Paula, how much I love Edmonton. And so we came, I came here 53 years ago. <laughs> We've been married 53 years. Alexis has an interesting story about Medicine Hat growing up there. Okay, so growing up in Medicine Hat, we had a fabulous Jewish community, uh, uh, 40 families. My grandmother was bought the first synagogue there, which was a used car, used Model T dealership. <laughs> and uh, anyway, when I was a little girl, I knew nothing about uh, any problems or anything. I wish the world, the whole world, was that naive. So I went to. I had a friend over, and then the next day I went to her house, and then she came to behind the screen door, and she said, "I'm sorry, you you can't come in," and I said well why what did I do she said no my grandmother says I can't play with you anymore because you killed Jesus so I said it wasn't me I don't even know Jesus it must have been my brother Lionel he's always in trouble <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first bit of anti-semitism and not only that I was so afraid to go to Calgary because then I heard Jesus died in Calgary but I and me but it's actually Calvary but I, as a little girl but Paula the community was so interesting that in the the uh, museum of the diaspora in Jerusalem Tel Aviv. in Tel Aviv I came around a corner and there was a picture of our entire Fader class as in black and white and all of the kids and the rabbi and everybody and it was an example of Western Jewish communities. As I said, I, I grew up in Camrose, but, uh, but uh, I came with my uh, parents and family uh, uh, to all the, all the high holidays in Edmonton and to the Seder at my aunt's. And so we were, because there was only a small Jewish community in Camrose. So uh, I had, uh, at first, uh, my, my folks belonged to the Beth Shalom, and it was uh, on 103rd Street uh, uh, over the uh, uh, Toma Torah, the old Toma Torah at that site. But I had the first bar mitzvah in 1951 at the new building on, on Jasper Avenue. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's my claim to fame. But uh, uh, other than that, uh, I mean, my memories of Growing up uh, in Ed uh, or coming to Edmonton are based mainly on visiting. We usually went over to my aunt's. Uh, her name was uh, Joe and Fanny Samuels, uh, and they lived on Connaught Drive at the time, not far from where our house is now. So I was very familiar with this area, and uh, that's where we had came for high holidays and seders and everything else, uh, and. The other place in Edmonton that I was very familiar with actually was the McDonald Hotel because my mom and dad uh, were in the clothing business. So they come in to see travelers there and they take me, my brother and I with us. So we'd spend the Sunday afternoons in the McDonald Hotel running around the hotel as kids and uh, reading our comic books and <laughs> seeing all the other Jewish men uh, in the clothing business in the halls and so that was fun um, i really uh i i i i can't think of uh any place more than that i was very important to us was the old tomatora because our children went there and uh and then as time went on my other um uh, strong relationship was with, I was the uh, chief of design uh, for the Beth Israel Synagogue when it was being built out in the West End and working with Joe Schachter to get that building up. So would, 
When you say the old Talma Torah, do you mean when it was on 135th Street? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Just not that far from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, you know, it was a lovely building and just to drive up and, and the camaraderie of all of the other Jewish mothers picking up their kids, <laughs> carpooling, it was, uh, it was very special. When I was in university, I lived in the, uh, the Sammy house. It was the Sigma Alpha Mu fraternity on the south side. It was on 88th Avenue. And, uh, and not far, just around the corner was the tuck shop, which was the main place that people had coffee, et cetera, on campus. And so it was very central. And uh, there, were, there were almost no apartments at that time. This was in the 50s. And uh, uh, so uh, those of us from out of town had uh, lived in the fraternity house. And most of the people there were from Calgary because Calgary had hardly any university at the time. And a lot of the guys that were there were in engineering at the time, for example. A lot of them were in chemical engineering, like uh, Irv Kipnis was, was, but almost none, they graduated, but none of them stayed with the chemical engineering. Anyway, I was there for about three years and uh, that was, and the fellows in Edmonton who were going to university would come over for lunch. And uh, I remember there was always an argument, where, where should we get our kosher food? From uh, Friedman or, or Zell's, the butcher? <laughs> <laughs> there was always an argument. <laughs> Part of my love for Edmonton was um, when I moved here, I didn't know a single soul. I, I just, I, I didn't know anyone. And the community of the ladies were so welcoming. Millie Singer took me under her wing. Um, uh, Cita Baldson, Celia Baldson, Cita Margolis. Um, they, they were just wonderful to me and immediately brought me into the Jewish um, uh, organizations. And um, for several years, uh, we put on an actual, a beautiful ball once a year at the McDonald Hotel. But just getting to know these ladies and they would have me for lunch or, or and people like the wine losses who invited us for our first Seder and the community was so warm that I, I, I just loved it immediately. We remember that house particularly because uh, it's uh, off Ravine Drive. Uh, uh, I, 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 was by, I was walking by the other day and the house, uh, of course, is still there, but it was famous because it was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. So it was one of the few yes. Edmonton houses that was really well known. Actually, an American author uh, did a, a, a pictorial of all of the Frank Lloyd Wright buildings and their house was in it. <laughs> Actually, he influenced us too, because uh, when Alexis did the design for the new Beth Israel Synagogue, we had just been to Chicago and went over to uh, the neighboring community where Frank Lloyd Wright lived. And we saw all the houses and the type of brick that was in many of them we used, or Alexis used uh, for the design of the exterior of the Beth, uh, of the new Beth Israel synagogue. Yeah, the Beth Israel is, I was very influenced by, uh, by, by that type of uh, design. I was involved with the architect from the beginning and um, did the, did all of, you know, the work with uh, designing the exterior and I did all of the interior. And uh, I think it stood the the uh, stood stood up for itself over time. It still looks uh, looks very contemporary, but warm. And that was the look I was going for. It was about twenty years ago. I, I can't believe. Yeah. <laughs> are there any places that um, meant something to you, but they are no longer in existence? And if so, what do you miss about them? Um, thank you. Uh, well, I was thinking of the Sammy house and, uh, and the uh, houses that my, uh, my aunt and uncle lived in, uh, first on Connaught Drive. And I, the houses are still there, but of course they're not there. But, you know, I have lots of memories about them. And then uh, not just, uh, but my uncle's brother 
uh, was also uh, Samuel, Ralph Samuels, Dr. Harold Samuels' father. Uh, I was always over at their house too. I called them uh, Uncle Ra Aunt Rose and Uncle Ralph. So the families were very close at the time. But with me, Paula, you know, I, I, I was the chief of design for McLab for 18 years. So I've done a lot of housing. So I try, I make an effort not to, to remember everything, or I'd be so sentimental all the time. I just, but uh, any, everything in Edmonton, I think is beautiful. In our house, we've been in our house for 42 years, but about 30 years ago, uh, there was a well-known film uh, Ann Wheeler? Uh, director, Ann Wheeler, who was well-known in Edmonton. They asked us whether they could use our house for a film called Angel Square, which was being shot mainly on the south side. Uh, but uh, I think you've got the picture yeah, here. <laughs> but but uh, they went and it was, uh, so they put snow in front of our house. It was a Christmas scene supposed to be from the 1940s. So there was a scene in the front, front, they put actually a Christmas tree in our front window and then they were shooting it. And the girl who was directing it, actually her name was Walsh. She was a cousin to Ron Walsh. Uh, I think she was from Winnipeg. But anyway, they were filming it and, and all of a sudden she said, halt, halt, cut, cut, <laughs> cut. And, and everybody said, what's the matter? She says, we got to remove the mezuzah from the door. Because it was Santa coming to <laughs> it was the door. <this> Christmas. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it was a funny incident. And, uh, but we had a lot of, actually, uh, then uh, I have a picture actually from it. I don't know if you can see this. We starred in the movie. Uh, Alexis said that she looked like, uh, uh, who? What did the old actor, Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. And I was Humphrey Bogart. And, we're with our son, JJ, who was a teenager at the time. Anyway, we all dressed up for that. I took time off for work and uh, we, uh, and we had a lot of fun. And, and so the next scene was in the Corbett Hall. They, it was, they turned the basement into a old uh, Woolworths, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Woolworths, Woolworths store and there was all Christmas decorations. And JJ and I were supposed to be in shopping Anyway, we wound up on the cutting room floor because we didn't get into it. But Alexis, the, the star of the film was Ned Beatty, and Alexis was in the film going up. He was Santa Claus taking somebody. So I remember we 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 um, brought a whole bunch of people over for the, for premiere. the for the premiere <laughs> to watch house. Alexis as uh, premiere as, as a star. In and then uh, we movie. offered an award to anyone who could find Eric and JJ. <laughs> yeah, we were, we never end, ended up in the film. <laughs> but this house that we live in have, has been used for um, other um, movies, for commercials, and it has a really interesting history, Paula, because in the 30s, when Eberhardt was the premier. He was a pretty mean guy. And the royal or the lieutenant governor and his wife were living over in government house, you know, behind the old museum. So he went to him one night to the uh, governor general, lieutenant governor, and he said, I want passage on two orders. I want royal assent on two things. The first one is complete censorship over the Edmonton Journal. And the um, lieutenant governor said, no chance, no, no. And the second was he wanted to print Alberta money. And he said again, sorry. So he was very vindictive and not knowing that, uh, that, the, that beautiful uh, building. building was uh, not owned federally, it was owned provincially. So he sent in packers and evicted them from the house the very next morning. And there is a wonderful picture of them out on 102nd <coughs> Avenue with the dog, the nanny, the prams, the children. They've just been, and their luggage all out on 2nd Avenue. So our house was actually um, built by Alberta's first Supreme Court justice. Yeah. And he said <coughs> to them, look, I've been dying to move into that brand new McDonald hotel. Why don't you move and take my house? So this house actually for uh, 11 years was government house. And uh, even when, when I was first looking at it, 
there were two of those little Burke's picture frames on the mantle and in childish handwriting said, thank you for letting us stay with you, Princess Margaret and Princess Elizabeth. So the house has a wonderful history, but uh, yeah, so this would be. So, it, <clears throat> so when our daughter was young and uh, if she wasn't behaving a lot. <laughs> I would say, her, Queen Elizabeth stayed in that room. You better go hang up your clothes. <laughs> it didn't work much. <laughs> 